Oh man, so Young Miami is responding to the allegation that she's a paid sex worker for Puffy. Now as I was editing my video, um, Carisha provided some more receipts showing that, like I told y'all before, Little Rod is lying in a lot of the court documents, bro. So she says, y'all be going for anything. This person says, you for that 250K a month. She says, something the internet made up and y'all ran with it. Nigga don't even pay that for child support. Why the fuck would a nigga ever pay me 250K for? For what? Now, I ain't gonna lie. I remember the reports coming out of thin air that that's how much she was getting paid and everybody was running with it, but she never denied it because it's a good story to have out there, so she never denied it. But now that's attached to something, she's coming out to deny it. I get it, you better deny that shit. So I did some research and everyone is sourcing Media Takeout as the originator of this rumor. And if y'all know about Media Takeout, they're known for lying. They have no shame when it comes to making up stories out of thin air. They also the ones that created the story that her allowance was cut at 200K a month because they actually said it was $500,000 a month that she was making. And people was believing that shit. But I'm gonna tell y'all this, Young Miami and Diddy ain't making no better because of shit like this right here. The people wanna know. Yeah, yeah, also, is what they wanna know. Are you a 100K poppy? Yes, that's me. Okay. That's me. You dropping 100K? 250. That right there don't make nothing no better, but they didn't say an actual monthly payment of 250. Now there's some proof, like you see is them going shopping and shit. And here goes a receipt saying 99K just to shop, thank you poppy. But we don't know if that was monthly stipends for 250K. But since it seemed like they played into the rumor, people are trying to draw correlations from that. But I'm letting y'all know right now, in court with the lawyers that Diddy or Young Miami can afford, basically Diddy or QCP can afford, they are gonna tear this lawyer ass up. The only other time I see Young Miami mention a dollar amount is on the Lola Brooks Don't Play With the Remix when she says, he called me baby, so it's 200 a K with it. But look at the lyrics, that's simply a play on Little Baby's Emotionally Scarred. He called me baby, so it's 200 a K with it. On Little Baby's song, Emotionally Scarred, he says, jumping on stages, I get 200 an occasion. It's a play on words, it's just rap lyrics. And also no mention of a monthly allowance. I've been searching the whole internet for a little minute and all I'm seeing is gossip blogs that speak on it. Whereas her PR team, she shouldn't be commenting anything for real. I mean, she could say something's false. <laughs> but when she don't say nothing, y'all say, oh, you being quiet. <laughs> but at the end of the day, she did put herself in a horrible situation. You can't deny that. Like even when it comes to the piss situation, she did say she had pissed on it before, but she didn't say it was Diddy. But the fact that she said it out loud gives people the chance to say, oh, Diddy pissed on you because that's in your most public relationship. But it could have been Southside. It could have been a baby that had passed away. It could have been any damn body because she never said the actual person who did it. It's say take a shot if you like go to showers, I do. Golden showers, meaning when the guy pees on you, mm -hmm. pee on you everywhere. You like it? I just like it. You do? Mm -hmm. Freak. <laughs> Freak of the week, huh? So you say take a shot. You not take, you say take a shot. Oh, we need yeah, a shot. I take a shot. You I like golden showers? I do. But it like just, peeing on you. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's just too I'm going to be pee. honest. Hold on one more thing. I need something a little, a little less. So I'm gonna be honest with you. I've never had a golden shower. I did. did you? <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a golden shower. Like I've given one. Oh, is that Ooh. the same thing as squirting or? Yeah, they well they say that I don't know, but I I don't had a golden shower and I like. I it. give them. I give them. Mm -hmm. Golden shower, huh? <laughs> 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 but I've never I've never experienced that. Hmm. I'm all about trying new things though. <laughs> Go it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Like, you know when you were drunk and you just and they just peeing all over your body. You just like you know peeing your butt, peeing your pussy. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and then y'all still have sex after. <laughs> it, it depends. Like you can pee on me in the shower. You can pee on me like once you come. Like it just depends. It just, it just depends on how the night flow. I gotta try this out. Go to shower. We gonna take one more because that go to shower. Huh? That's lit. <laughs> you should have never said that shit in the first place though. And P Diddy, that shit funny as hell. You can, it's too easy. It's too easy. She gave people layups, bro. So sources close to Young Miami deny narcotic trafficking allegations and say they have the time sense to prove it. Footage seemingly places her in New York during Diddy's Virginia performance. So once again, what y'all seen in the lawsuit was that that she was contacted to come from Miami to Virginia with the pink cocaine. So this time step shows that she's in New York at that point in time when he's performing. Time step shows 11 o'clock while she's watching him on TV. You can hear her and all that stuff. Listen to her. Now, this is some more of her 
at 1026 timestamps in New York, 1026 and at 1230 that day in New York doing this photo shoot. So based on these timestamps, she's in New York, not in Virginia, doing whatever that was needed to be done for him. Yeah, Miami was in New York doing Diddy Something in the Water performance and it's updated lawsuit Roddy Jones, AKA Lil Rod claims that Yeah, Miami was contacted by Christina Coram and brought pink cocaine, which is a combination of ecstasy and cocaine to Virginia on a private jet from Miami. He claims that the incident took place while the Combs Rico Enterprise were rehearsing for Something in the Water Festival in Virginia. However, sources close to the situation have provided iPhone footage and photos in an attempt to clear the air. The festival mission in the lawsuit took place in Virginia Beach from April 28th through the 30th in 2023. Sources close to Young Miami says that she was miles away in New York at the time preparing for the 2023 Met Gala, which she attended with Diddy according to the dates on the footage. Young Miami was cheering her poppy on in New York while she watched him hit the Virginia Festival stage. The Shade Room cannot confirm if Little Rod's claims were specific to this day and time frame, nor the validity of the timestamps. Once again, Young Miami isn't the only celebrity to shoot down claims made in Little Rod's lawsuit. Diddy, Stevie J, and Justin Combs have all come forward and denied the allegations made against them. A representative from Justin Combs made it clear in a recent statement that there will be legal consequences for all defamatory statements made about the Combs family. Sources close to Young Miami say that there is no need to take legal actions against Little Rod at this time. Now, some people are saying that, hey, she's lying. She can switch up the timestamps. Y'all do know iPhone. They can change the date and time and X, Y, and Z. But I did a little research. She's not lying. So you look closely. Diddy on the stage. Busta Rhymes, Pharrell, and some other dude there on the stage. Um, let me let her zoom in. Y'all see them on the stage right there, all right? Now, some people may remember this, but let me jog y'all memory. This is April 29th. Koi LeRae is on the stage. And if I scroll down, y'all see it's the same thing the L Miami's watching live while Diddy was on the stage. Now, the reason I bring up Koi LeRae because is when the rumors went viral that Koi LeRae and Lotto got into a fight backstage. That was April 29th that led into April 30th. And this was people saying that they did not fight that same morning posting it saying that Lotto was at a club last night. Stop being delusion and believing fake rumors. This is at 10.07 a.m. April 30th. So the night before was the 29th where Koi Ray was performing at the Something in the Water Festival. People thought she was fighting, but that same day, Diddy was performing with Pharrell and Young Miami was watching, preparing for the Met Gala in New York. That led into the morning of April 30th. So she's not lying about her time stamp. What she did before that though? <laughs> we talk about some PJs. What she did before that though? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> with the type of money that Diddy had at a point in time, you could rip and run how you want to. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just trying to be transparent as I try to figure things out with y'all. You feel me? But she's not lying. That's what she was. If you like Young Miami, this evidence means a lot to you. If you don't like her, you're going to figure out the way to go ahead and discount this evidence. So do what y'all want. I don't give a damn. Speaking of, Academics has continued to roast her. So yesterday he says, uh, Young Miami 305, what this means? So he's posting everything that we've already discussed as far as her being called the mule for drugs, bringing the pink, pink cocaine. So he continues to roast her though, saying, um, Young Miami being called a sex worker and a drug mule in a lawsuit, but was tight at me for calling her a side chick. Nigga, sound like I was giving her a promotion. An upgrade from these other titles she's being referred to. <laughs> Hey, act crazy, boy. Women rap gladly about funkin' for a bag, then get labeled a sex worker and throw hissy fits. <laughs> I posted this yesterday. Once again, I'll play it one more time. Let's play it one more game. I just had a conversation with somebody that I said, I'm really, like, I'm more like with a, with a W, like I'm more. But define that, though. Like, I'm more. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a conversation with like I told y'all, I am from Miami, so I'm gonna defend my people from Miami, but some shit you can't defend. Like, come on, you put a horrible digital footprint out there, Carisha. And it's all coming back to haunt you like crazy. Some things she didn't say, but some things she said loosely. So the internet did what it does, and they made their own assumptions for some things. She's been making a horrible digital footprint for the past few years. But um, Act says, why y'all acting surprised? She's been literally telling us this her whole career. Y'all gotta ask Diddy for the price list and menu if y'all trying to make a move. He flaming her, boy, and it is what it is. I told y'all to defend my people, but sometimes it is what it is. But I did see this post, and I want to talk about it real quick. This person says, prostitution is so cool and trendy until it's directly called prostitution. <laughs> LOL, then depending on the user of the word, it's either pick me or misogynistic. Boy, you said a word right there. Let's look at some comments. And the mental gymnastics over here is crazy. So nobody never talk about these niggas buying it though. Um, sex work is sex work until the last consent or involves a minor because they can't consent. Then it's rape, abuse, trafficking, and massage noir. 
I hope that helps. How did you get there? How did you get there from what he said? How? When some folks cannot dispute what you said, they go ahead and just throw some random shit against the wall and hope it stick. And there's 746 people helping it stick because these are 746 super people too. You just decide to have your own conversation. Homie says, selling your body for currency will never be a good thing, no matter what mental gymnastics you do to justify it. Sex work is not work. I don't care what you say to normalize it. It's not normal and it's just dangerous. Stop buying it, fellas, and then they won't have anyone to sell it to. I get that, but I mean, that's not the conversation. The conversation is prostitution is cool and trendy until someone's called a prostitute. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. People don't want to be called a prostitute when they be out here moving in prostitute ways. Sex work ways. That's the thing. That's the point. That's the thesis. So no matter how much y'all try to remix the terms that leads to the same definition, <laughs> You want to remix the term that leads to the same damn definition. There's a synonym to all these damn things. A lot of you guys do find it to be wrong. That's the point. But just before we sign out, UMG and Lucian Grange. Lucian Grange. Blast lawyer for adding them to Diddy Sex Abuse lawsuit. Recklessly false. So, attorneys for Universal Music Group CEO Lucian Grange fired back at the lawsuit that claims he and the label aided and abetted Sean Diddy Combs in his alleged sexual abuse, saying the accusations are so offensively false that they plan to seek legal penalties against the lawyer who filed them. Keep trying to tell y'all this lawyer is overzealous, boy. In a motion to dismiss all claims against UMG and Grange, the label's lawyers blast the attorney Tyrone Blackburn for filing knowingly false allegations of criminal wrongdoing without the slightest factual or legal basis. They said they would seek so-called sanctions against him in a future filing. So once again, you know how everyone is going based on a civil complaint and taking that as law? Well, they entered a court document because they all know y'all Y'all love hearing court documents. They enter the court document called a motion to dismiss all the claims saying all this shit is false without the slightest factual or legal basis. So they continue to say a license to practice law is a privilege, wrote Donald Zachary, a longtime music industry litigator who represents UMG and Grange. Mr. Blackburn, plaintiff's lawyer, has misused that license to self-promote, gratuitously, falsely, and recklessly accusing the UMG defendants of criminal behavior. The complaint hurls accusations of criminal racketeering and criminal sex trafficking amongst the UMG defendants, respect the individuals and companies have utterly nothing to do with the plaintiff's claims. Zachary wrote Wednesday filings, these accusations are recklessly false and, but for the fact that they are embodied in the complaint, would be libelous. Libel. In his filing, Zachary called it the worst lawyering he has seen in nearly 50 years as an attorney. In all that time, I have never seen any attorney display anything remotely like the utter indifference shown by Mr. Blackburn towards his obligations as an attorney. I have never seen any lawyer in any pleading, in any court, accuse people in companies of criminal conduct without the slightest basis and then try to file an amended pleading completely jettisoning every allegation underpinning the original claims and substituting completely different and irreconcilable allegations to support the very same claims. So basically saying you was lying in the first half and we thought that you were going to fix it because your lies are being called out. And then you come in the line even worse. What the hell are you doing? So in a letter to the judge, Thursday Blackburn responded to UMG motion by calling the, it a public relations stunt that had been filed in bad faith. They did not have any issues marrying themselves to Mr. Combs when it was popular. Now suddenly they are treating Mr. Combs like he has the plague. But Blackburn wrote in the letter. In a statement to Billboard on Thursday, Blackburn said UMG should produce their financial workers. Let's see what the money was used for. Stop trying to escape liability. Listen, this dude, Tyrone Blackburn, like I told y'all before, he studies the landscape of social media and he's writing the best novel for all the blogs. I think some things Let's let's talk now. I think because Little Rod was close to Diddy throughout the time, he did see some things. Because Diddy is wild. I think he did see some things. So some stuff may be true. But most of the things, most of the allegations, they're doing what they can to compete with the Cassie lawsuit to embarrass Diddy to the point to settle. All because Diddy did not pay Little Rod his publisher. Diddy, this is all your fault. This is all your fault. If you would have just gave him his publishing, then you wouldn't be in this mess to this point. You probably could have bounced back from the Cassie shit. But I do think this, I do think that Cassie's lawsuit and Diddy settling then is the reason why he was raided. And y'all seen what happened immediately after the raid was done. Cassie's lawyer put out a statement saying, we are willing to corroborate. 
Cassie's lawsuit is the reason why. Lil Rod, he just trying to get his money. But it's a good read, man. It's a good story. But boy, boy, Tyrone Blackburn, they are gonna sue your ass if you cannot prove these things to be true. One last thing, please understand that what most people are reacting to is it's a lawsuit. People can lie in lawsuits. Just because it's a court document doesn't mean it's a sworn statement. It's a complaint. And the tactic that Little Rod and his lawyer is doing is trying to create as much of a media storm to embarrass Diddy to make him settle. They don't want to go to court because when you go to court, you have to prove your case. You have to prove what you said to be true. So once again, Diddy should have just gave Little Rod his publisher. He won his money. And at the bare minimum, he's fine with seeing it. So his whole shit crumb. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. I'm going to get up out of here though. This is another update with Stace. Yo.